Java 9 Network Programming Section 4 Introduction Section 4 is devoted to Java New I.O. We will program New I.O. in Java. We will transfer files asynchronously and extremely fast. First, we will get acquainted with the whole structure and the meanings of all those terminologies and tools that Java NIO uses, and then we will get into the details of those, like scatter and gather, transfer, select, in this case Java NIO select, socket, NIO socket, and how we can manage memory mapped files. Hello, this is the first video of the last section of the first part of this video tutorial. This section is about Java NIO, which stands for New IO. Java NIO is a very high performance networking and file handling API and structure. NIO, the building blocks are channels and buffers, and channel and data always travels from a channel to a buffer or from a buffer to a channel. The transfer is asynchronous. We prepare data in a buffer, then we set up a channel and then we ask NIO to transfer the data. Then we go on computing and later we can check that the data was transferred. Or if we do it the other way around, we prepare an empty buffer, which is the same as a previous one. Then we set up a channel. We ask NIO to transfer the data from the channel to the buffer. Go on computing. And then we check later that the data was transferred and then we use the data happily. Using NIO, a single thread can handle multiple channels using selectors. Using selectors, a single thread may control several channels. Whenever one is finished with the transfer, the thread can attend to the result. When there are more then the thread can attend to one after the other and handle all of them in a loop. When there is none, so there is no channel which the thread could manage, then the thread can do something else, go on computing and return checking the channels later on. Let's have a look at what really channels are. Java NIO channels can be read and written. So they are read and write all the time, as opposed to streams, which are usually either read or write only. Channels always read from buffer or write to a buffer. It's not possible to read directly from a channel. We should always prepare a buffer and tell the channel to write there, or prepare some data in a buffer and tell the channel to read from that buffer. There are different types of channels. Java NIO defines the following channels depending on where the data is going through the channel or from where the data is coming through the channel. The simplest one, and we will use it many times in demos, is a file channel. In this case, the data comes from a file on the disk or it goes to a file on the disk. Then there is a datagram channel which can handle UDP connection. There is a socket channel when we are sending data through a socket to a server or we are receiving data from a server through the socket. And there is separately a server socket channel when we are implementing a server using Java NIO. How to use channels? First, we have to create a channel and then we can read from the channel to the buffer. To create a channel in the sample that we will see in the demo in the following videos, we create a random access file and then from the random access file object, we can get a channel. And then we can allocate a buffer in this example on the screen 10 bytes long. And then we can read into the buffer from this channel. And then this demo just prints out on the screen what is inside the file. What is a buffer? The buffer is that we use in connection with the channel. Buffers store the data to be read by a channel 
or to store the data that comes from a channel. The buffer has a position, a limit, and capacity. When we are doing write mode, then the position is where the next byte is going to be written. The limit is the same as the capacity, the absolute size of the buffer. So when we write, then the position goes on. When we are in read mode, then the position where we are going to read the next byte, or if it's not a byte buffer, the next something from the buffer, can be int, long, character, whatever. The limit is the pointer or index until the buffer is filled with data, and the capacity is the absolute size of the buffer. So when we read, then the position moves on, and then when it reaches the limit, then it actually stops because there is no more data in it. What kind of buffers can we have? As I said previously, it's not only byte. We have byte buffers, which is an array of bytes. Not Java array, it's a byte buffer, but it contains bytes. We can have character buffer, car buffer, double buffer, float, int, long, and short buffer. These are the buffers that are defined in the GDK. How should we use the buffers? We should allocate it as it's the same example as we have seen already in the previous slide. We allocate it 10 bytes long in the example. Then we write data to the buffer from the channel. And then we have to flip the buffer. Flipping the buffer is just modifies the position and the limit, and it prepares the buffer from write mode to read mode. So we were writing into the buffer, then we flip it, and then we start to read from the buffer. And when we flipped the buffer, then we can read the data from the buffer. We can also do it a different way. When we are sending data to the channel, then we allocate the buffer, we write directly data to the buffer, not, we are not asking the channel to write to it, but we are writing, as in the example, using the put method. Then we flip the buffer, and then we give the buffer to the channel so that it can get the data from the channel and write what is in the buffer to the channel and through the channel to the file. Now let's see what really flipping is. So when we are in write mode and we have a position and we have a limit, which is the same as the capacity of the buffer while we are writing, when we are flipping, then the position goes to the start of the buffer because we have filled up the buffer and then we are ready to read from the very start and the limit will go where the position was. Until then, while we are writing it, the limit is the capacity. When we are clearing the buffer, then it can be filled again. So in this case, the position goes to the start, limit goes to the end. We can also compact a buffer when we were reading from it and still there is some data in the buffer. And then we want to use the data, which was not read yet. Then we just move the data to the front of the buffer and then we move the position and the limit. Scattering and gathering. It's possible to write from one channel to several buffers at the same time. So we can not only give channel one buffer to write into, but it's also possible to give the channel an array of buffers. In this case, it's really an array of different buffers, different sized or, or the same size buffer, but different buffers. Then the channel will write the data from somewhere into the buffers. And when we are reading from these buffers, after all are flipped, then another channel or the same channel will read from the channels one after the other. It's a very powerful tool when we are using some data structure which has fixed sized records and the structure of the records is fixed size so that on a very low level we can already split up the data structure 
and then different threads, different parts of the code can simultaneously work with the different parts. We will have an interesting example for this. It's not suitable for dynamic size structures. Transferring data from channel to channel, it's a very powerful method when we want to send data without any modification from one channel to the other. In this case, we do not read from the channel to a buffer and from the buffer to the channel as we did before and as the picture depicts on the screen, but rather we write from the channel to another channel directly. And finally, we have to talk about selector. Selectors are effective when the application has to handle many low volume connections. If all are high volumes, then we just cannot handle them. If they are low volume in the sense that one thread can handle all of them, except that if it start, gets stuck with one and starts to wait on one, then it cannot manage the other one which is ready. But selector can tell which channel is ready to manage, to read from, to write to, or accept a connection, whatever. And then the thread can attend to those channels only which are ready and can provide some data or can get some data from the thread. The thread is registering the channel to the selector and whenever the selector is invoked with the select method then it will wait until there is at least one channel that is ready or we can specify a timeout or if it returns then it will return a set of channels and then the thread can attend to those channels.